First, President Xi is on a two-day uh, state visit to Vietnam, calling relations uh, a priority in the neighborhood diplomacy. They've announced dozens of deals in railways and telecommunications. Uh, next, meetings with Vietnam's state leaders, including the president and prime minister. Vietnam rolled out the red carpet on Tuesday for Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee and Chinese President, as he began his first state visit to the Southeast Asian nation since 2017. His visit came as the socialist neighbours celebrate the 15th anniversary of their comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership. In written remarks released upon his arrival, Xi Jinping said he expects to have an in-depth exchange of views with Vietnamese leaders on strategic matters critical to the future of the two parties and two countries. International and regional issues of common concern are also on the agenda. Following his arrival, President Xi was given a warm welcome on the streets of Hanoi. Xi, accompanied by Nguyen Phu Chong, General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee, was honoured at a welcoming ceremony with a 21-gun salute. <laughs> After the ceremony, Xi and Chong held a meeting, during which Xi Jinping said as brothers, the two sides are pleased to see the achievements Vietnam has made over its 40 years of reforms, especially since the 13th National Congress of the Communist Party of Vietnam. China firmly supports Vietnam's socialist construction and believes the Communist Party of Vietnam and the Vietnamese government will be able to successfully complete all tasks set out in the Congress. Xi Jinping said China and Vietnam have supported each other in their respective struggles for national independence and liberation and have learned from each other's reforms, opening up and innovations. He said China has always seen its relations with Vietnam from a strategic and long-term perspective. He believes China-Vietnam relations will enter a new stage of greater political mutual trust with more solid security cooperation, deeper mutually beneficial cooperation, stronger popular support and better management and resolution of differences. Xi said China and Vietnam will continue to make new achievements in the cause of socialist construction and make new contributions to regional and world stability, development and prosperity. Xi Jinping put forward several suggestions on building a China-Vietnam community with a shared future. He called on the two sides to adhere to high-level strategic guidance, strengthen exchanges and mutual learning on party and state governance, firmly supported each other on issues concerning each side's core interests and major concerns, and jointly upheld international equity and justice. On security issues, Xi pointed out that both sides must give top priority to safeguarding national political security. He said China firmly supports Vietnam in maintaining social stability and ethnic unity and believes that Vietnam will continue to support China in opposing external interference and firmly advancing the cause of national reunification. Xi Jinping also called for enhanced people-to-people -people exchanges and further bilateral cooperation in agriculture, education, healthcare and other areas concerning people's livelihood. He said the two sides should strengthen coordination on international and regional affairs and made it clear that China does not engage in exclusive cliques, block politics or camp confrontation. On maritime issues, Xi stressed the need to manage differences. He said the two sides should actively explore and cooperate more on maritime projects, strive to promote joint maritime development and turn the challenges brought by maritime issues into opportunities for deepening bilateral cooperation. Nguyen Phu Chong welcomed Xi Jinping on his state visit to Vietnam and congratulated Xi on the achievements made under the CPC 20th Party Congress. Chong said Vietnam acknowledges China's accomplishments and rising influence. He said Vietnam hopes China will realise its goals and contribute to the progress of the society under the party's leadership. Chong honoured Xi's leadership as a friend of Vietnam and praised the friendship between the two countries. He said his invited visit to China after the CPC's 20th Congress and Xi's third state visit to Vietnam demonstrated the special friendship and high-level relations between the two countries. He mentioned his planting of trees at Friendship Pass, hoping will send out a positive signal and be a symbol of brotherhood. Chong said Hanoi appreciates China's firm support of Vietnam's reforms and opening up industrialization and modernization. Chong also thanked China for its help during the COVID-19 pandemic. Vietnam said it acknowledges Taiwan as a part of China and supports China's reunification. The Vietnamese leader said Hanoi will adhere to the One China principle. 
He also said Vietnam stands against all forces of interference in China's domestic affairs. Hanoi hopes Beijing will maintain stability, growth and prosperity. Hanoi also said it adheres to an independent foreign policy and sees relations with China as a top priority and strategic choice. Vietnam wants to build a strategic community with a shared future with China. It also wants to boost cooperation in politics, trade, security and people-to-people -people exchanges. Chang said an exemplar bilateral ties of mutual benefit is of common interest for both sides. Hanoi said maritime conflicts do not define ties with Beijing and the issues can be properly managed with mutual trust and respect. Chang said he believes that Xi's visit will push bilateral ties to new heights and be conducive to world peace. After the meeting, the two leaders witnessed the signing of a wide range of agreements which cover over 30 sectors such as the Belt and Road Initiative, green development and digital economy. The two leaders also shared a tea break and shared their determinations of modernization. Both sides expressed the willingness to issue a joint declaration to enhance the partnership and build a strategic community with a shared future. For more on this, we're joined by uh, Joseph Gregory uh, Mahoney. He's the Professor of Politics and International Relations at the East China Normal University in Shanghai. Uh, good to see you. Thank you for your time. Um, so we don't talk about this topic very often, so let's start with at least regionally, why is this relationship between China and, and Vietnam important? Well, hi, Phil. Uh, good morning from Shanghai and good evening in Washington. Uh, you know, Southeast Asia is uh, very, very important uh, as a rising uh, economic uh, power in its own right, and, and Vietnam is clearly uh, one of the uh, major parts of Southeast Asia. Uh, and we know that in recent years, um, uh, China's relationship with Southeast Asia has been, uh, on the whole, very positive, but it's also been troubled by issues like uh, maritime security and maritime borders. And we know that uh, other countries, uh, uh, including uh, the United States, have uh, tried to exploit some of those frictions in order to uh, facilitate uh, uh, Washington-led containment policies and the like. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, China and uh, Southeast Asia uh, relations continue to advance. And uh, most specifically, uh, I think where we have seen those advances uh, really moving forward, despite a sometimes difficult history is between China and Vietnam. And indeed, I think they have uh, set a model uh, for improved uh, regional relations uh, uh, throughout uh, Asia. Yeah, I, I want to push back a little bit. I mean, you mentioned the containment policy, and I guess that leads to sort of um, the relationship with Vietnam and the U.S., because that also is a, a good relationship as well. So Vietnam ends up being sort of having two good relationships. Why is this, or what do you think the reaction of, of Washington will be? You know, you, you saw the package, you, you saw what we've said. Um, the West clearly has an interest in Vietnam. There's a number of multinational firms operating in Vietnam, in part to diversify their supply chains out, out of China. Well, you know, there was a report that uh, Joe Biden, of course, uh, visited uh, Vietnam in September because he was worried that Vietnam was tilting in the direction of uh, China. And then we've seen reports in the West that uh, President Xi was visiting Vietnam because there was you know, worries after uh, Biden's visit that, that Vietnam might be tilting in the direction of, of the U.S. Of course, you know, uh, President Xi's visit is the culmination of a, three, a series of three visits that have been uh, planned and, and uh, developing over the past year. Um, in fact, uh, I think that um, uh, Vietnam has made it clear that they are in, uh, pursuing a, a diverse, uh, independent foreign policy. Um, and uh, I think this is good for China. Um, it, it, uh, although uh, Vietnam's uh, biggest trading partner is by far China, um, we know that, um, uh, that even before the U.S. trade war uh, against China, that a number of uh, jobs were leaving uh, the Chinese market and moving to Vietnam. This was a, a positive uh, development um, uh, for both countries. And we know that despite uh, some American efforts to diversify their supply chains, that a lot of the, the supply chains that are now being uh, located in Vietnam are actually downstream from, from Chinese uh, um, uh, supply chains. And indeed, right. that a lot of the factories in Vietnam are benefiting from Chinese investment and Chinese machinery. It, it is fascinating, I think, you know, when we talk about diversification, they're so interconnected in ways that, you know, we only touch on the surface of it. But if you dig a little deeper, as, as you uh, insinuated, that they're, 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 the ties are deep. 
Um, when it comes to these agreements, a lot of them are on infrastructure. And uh, no secret that China um, has been the leader in infrastructure, um, especially in Asia, and especially in that region. Um, for Vietnam, they've had a deep relationship already in the past. What's the next step forward for this? Well, you know, I, I, as your lead in noted, uh, there were more than 30 uh, um, uh, agreements, or, or, or agreements covering more than 30 areas. And these included things like green development and BRI and, and uh, infrastructure. Um, I, think, I think what's really fascinating uh, for me is that uh, we know that BRI and these other initiatives are uh, key aspects of, of Chinese foreign policy. We know that it's part of China's uh, efforts to cultivate goodwill, particularly with uh, uh, near neighbors. We know that BRI has been a powerful mover in Southeast Asia and, and that uh, Vietnam has embraced it. Uh, I think that uh, as we have seen with, with uh, uh, the, a number of the agreements that uh, the China-Vietnam relationship uh, has grown to epitomize uh, the Chinese principle of uh, emphasizing common ground while reserving differences. Uh, but above all, you know, this, this key talking point that we heard from the Vietnamese leadership uh, community with a shared future, I think this really demonstrates uh, the, the overall trajectory of the ties and how they will continue to uh, impact economic and, and bilateral trade relations. You look at the two countries, um, they share a lot in common when it comes to exports, They're both heavily export driven. They both have um, uh, an amazing domestic consumption uh, economy that they're, they're both building. And, and they're considered probably the, the economic you know, center for entrepreneurism. In some ways, they're they're friend, they're competing on a, on a very friendly basis. Vietnam seems to be the winner. They're going to get you know everybody courting them just purely because of the situation they're in. For China, what does China get? Well, you know, I think that China's uh, position has been that uh, you know there can be win-win uh, relationships. That that what is good for Vietnam isn't necessarily bad. Uh, for China, as we've already said, you know, a lot of the uh, supply chains in, in Vietnam are actually downstream from Chinese supply chains. So as long as uh, uh, trade is good for Vietnam, it, it probably has carryover effects. Certainly, uh, 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 China is investing in Vietnam through BRI. And as long as uh, uh, Vietnam has good uh, has a good economy and strong relations with other countries, uh, those BRI investments will pay off uh, down the road. So uh, this, in addition to, you know, in, uh, uh, as President Xi has noted on several occasions, that uh, uh, better development means better security um, and uh, that closer ties uh, it, it, uh, helps facilitate um, um, uh, greater security. Um, we know that, um, uh, that, that the relationship will continue to move forward. All right. Um we shall see what announcements 